Thank you for watching. May God richly bless you as you seek to live for His glory. Hey, good evening. It's Thursday, April 18th, and welcome back to Everyday Talk 24-7. It's a warm spring day, I believe, as our first 90-degree day here in the Midlands, at least where I am. And I'm, again, I get to see such beautiful things, the, the fields, I see the cows off in the distance, just the beautiful blessings of God. Today I want to talk about how wisdom protects and shapes your emotions. How wisdom protects and shapes your emotions. We're going to be looking at Proverbs chapter 4, verses 10 through 13. And my wife Ruth, in her book, Get Wisdom, emphasized the importance of this section in chapter 4 about understanding the foundation that wisdom provides for us. Remember, we talked about wisdom as one component of wisdom is obeying. But there's also the component of understanding what the Holy Spirit is getting from the text and then actually obeying the text and then using what you've learned from the actual biblical text from the proverb and using that to make decisions, using that to guide you. That's how wisdom protects you. It's how it shapes your emotions. In this particular section of Proverbs 4, the speaker is David. He's speaking to his son, so he's speaking kind of as a grandfather here. But the amazing thing about David here is that, remember, he's the author of many, many of the Psalms. And all the emotional energy that are in the Psalms, David is bringing to this section. Because remember, he's saying, whatever it costs, get wisdom. No matter what it costs. Because David's come out of this life experience of just seeing how much, how much chaos, tragedy, and upset comes from not being wise, both of them observing other people and also seeing his own life. So David has a lot of skin in the game, if you want to say it that way. He's invested. So he's not just speaking idle words to Solomon and his grandson. He's speaking words that are urgently burning inside of him. So all the emotions of the Psalms, David is bringing to the table here. And my working definition of emotions are this. Emotions are the result of your inner person, how your inner person interprets the events that impact your life. Emotions are the result of how your inner person interprets the events of your life. Whether you see something is happy or sad or, or nervous or anxious or whatever it is, it depends upon how you view those things, how deeply you've bought in to God's wisdom. If you're on the path, and, and the Proverbs use, and the Psalms particularly, the Proverbs use the idea of path, way, walk, for a particular reason. Because again, we're not talking just about simply keeping rules. We're talking about the stuff of your life. So if, the path you are, if you're on the path of wisdom, your emotions will protect you and bring stability to your life. If you're on the path of wisdom, your emotions will protect you and bring stability to your life. But if you're not on the path of wisdom, if you're following your own judgment, if you're wise in your own eyes, then your emotions can enslave you and produce instability and upset. This is huge, and the Proverbs teach us this. Thus, wisdom is more than just keeping rules. It's more than simple obedience. Wisdom guards your life. Wisdom causes your emotions to work for you rather than against you. So you can see how important this, this passage is and why David is so emotionally invested in the passage. So let me read verses 10 to 13 for you. Chap Proverbs 4, verse 10. Listen, my son, and accept my words, that the years of your life will be many. See, what's being talked about here is a lifestyle that produces long life. It's not necessarily a guarantee that you're going to live forever or a long time, even though eternity is part of it. 
That's not what's being promised here. But it's, it's a lifestyle that produces that. Wisdom produces a lifestyle that yields a long life. Maybe the clearest example I can think of, it's very personal to me, is my mother-in-law and her daughter Ruth. They both lived and thought and acted the same way with wisdom. Ruth's mom lived to be 101. She lived that lifestyle that produces long life. Ruth lived the same lifestyle, but the Lord chose to interact to change the course of her life, and she died of cancer at 60. That doesn't invalidate the proverb. It only underscores what's being taught here. It produces a lifestyle that yields a long life. And both Ruth and her mom lived that lifestyle. And Ruth embraced that. And even in death, as we'll see in a minute, even in death, or the threat of death with brain cancer, it did not shake her faith. So that's the first thing that is being said. Wisdom, it, it produces a lifestyle that will yield a long life. Then verse 11 says this. Verse 11 and 12 go together. I instruct you in the way of wisdom. I lead you along straight tracks, those straight paths. There, there's that emphasis on walking again. When you walk, your step will not be hampered. And if you run, you will not stumble. Isaiah, in chapter 40, quotes these very, these very words, talking about the stability that comes from people who trust God. And you see at the end of that 40th chapter, that glorious chapter, where Isaiah is saying, we buy into the things of God. See, these are not the promises of an easy life, but they are the promise of not letting the hardness of life crush you. If you buy in with wisdom, the emotional stability doesn't guarantee a life that's easy, but it will keep life from crushing you. And again, you see that in Ruth, where cancer did not crush her. Her faith never wavered. She knew this was from God. She was confident with God. She knew that God had good things for her. So again, living this lifestyle of wisdom doesn't mean you're going to have an easy life, but it means the hardness of life will not crush you. And then verse 13 sums it up this way. Hold on to instruction. Do not stop. Guard it, for it is your life. So this instruction that David is giving, get wisdom, no matter what it costs you, get wisdom. Make the truth of God the most important thing. It's more precious than anything you can desire. So he says, hold on to it. Keep it tightly within you. Don't stop with that process. Don't give up on it. And then guard it and protect it because it's your most precious possession. If that's your mindset, the result then is wisdom that guards your heart. And we'll see that towards the end of chapter 4 when we get there. So you see what's being talked about here. This is how wisdom protects your life. This is how wisdom will shape and protect your emotions, making your emotions work for you. In short, what David is saying what the Holy Spirit is saying through David. Make wisdom your life. Because that's where security is. That's where emotional stability is. Again, love your thoughts and feedback. I'm excited to get them. Um, some Q&A fire tomorrow, a couple questions. But I'm excited to keep working through this material with you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for these precious moments of interaction. And the Lord bless you. And uh, Lord willing. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good evening.